Hola, me llamo Joel Torres. No me estoy Pedro me Hello, my name is Jaden Gabe. Buenos días, mi nombre es Catherine Vélez. I may be wondering why we just spoke in different languages. Well, this leads me to our main question. To what extent has globalization impacted the welfare of indigenous languages? As a team, we've reached the conclusion that globalization has negatively affected the welfare of indigenous languages. In this presentation, we will first look at the products of globalization and how indigenous people struggle to access them. We will then explain how language policy reinforces indigenous people's ability to seek opportunities through the means of those products. Then finally, demonstrate how this is leading to the decline of cultural transmission and language tongues. Before we dive in into the negative effects of globalization, we'll, I'll start by sharing the positive effects of globalization through pop culture. Throughout pop culture, technology has produced new ways to learn languages. There are many ways technology has evolved, creating more effective ways to learn new languages. For example, when learners use an electronic device to record themselves using the language they want to learn and brings these recordings to their instructor or peer for help and feedback is potentially one way of learning, of learning a new language via technology. New technology advances are ultimately creating, are ultimately sharing and creating a pres, uh, like a per se, preserving indigenous languages. According to these two graphs, each each graph represents a, a category. The first graph represents a conceptual understanding in a classroom, and the second graph shows the actual learning occurring in a classroom. Each color represents a teaching technique. Red represents e-learning, and blue represents traditional teaching techniques. Higher percentage, e-learning shows the higher percentage for both types of categories. Eventually, technology is becoming a, a safe space for languages to preserve. Um, potentially one way of learning uh, via internet is the way that is the most. As opposed to the benefits of technology, with the spread of pop culture, education of the more popular languages is more valued than the education of the less common ones. The greater half of the education departments will fund the more desired schools that teach with and use popular languages rather than the ones that teach indigenous languages. This is a map displaying areas and the severity for language endangerment. As you can see here, Northern Australia is in dark red, showing that the threat level is very severe. This is due to the lack of resources Australian language schools have. These community schools teach a variety of languages that are native to Australia. Such schools should be upholding and keeping these languages alive. However, according to Heritage Language Education, most run on symbolic payment or voluntary work, which makes it very difficult to do so. This is a byproduct of pop culture. The effect of this is less development of these schools, resulting in the more prominent language English to preside in Australia, rather than the languages that these schools teach. Bouncing off what Maida said, um, indigenous people's inability to access these resources and seek opportunities through the means of these resources is reinforced by language policy. Language policy is governmental or institutional policies that discourage or encourage the use of certain languages. In accordance with the visual, you can see the most common type of language policy is at the state level or governmental level. Then second, the schooling or institutional level. And finally, the less common one being at the teaching or instructional level. Furthermore, language policy has the ability to influence communities' opinions and attitudes towards indigenous languages, as well as may create obstacles for indigenous people um, pursuing new careers and entering higher education. A great example of this is in the South American country of Bolivia, where, which according to the International Work Group for Indigenous Affairs, says there is over 30 different ethnic groups and indigenous languages. As you can see in the brown is the Quechua language, which is spoken by a fifth of the Bolivian population and is the number one most spoken indigenous language in Bolivia. In the red, we have the Asmaran indigenous language, which is spoken by a little over a tenth of their population and is the second most spoken language in the country. Furthermore, Bolivian public schools are required to teach Bolivian students in at least one indigenous language. Despite this, indigenous languages as a whole are still put in still put in the back burner in the country. Best put by as as modern language activist Katuta Cody, where she explains that 
greater time loads are put on that of foreign languages than that of indigenous languages. This just shows how globalization has been more of a burden rather than a benefit to indigenous people. As language policies influence indigenous language speakers, studies have been conducted to determine just how much of an effect. And although language policies did not make the list, the table five chart on the left represents the top nine reasons that did make the list. In 2022, a group of bilingual mothers was asked to provide the main reasons for the voluntary use of a mainstream language rather than the mother tongue. These mothers claimed the top reason for leaving their own language behind was to teach their kids a good language or a well-known language, such as English in the hopes of better opportunities or an overall better chance at a good future for their children. The issue with this is that in the hopes of a better future, English is now the most taught language worldwide, currently standing at a fast 1.5 billion learners, leaving the majority of indigenous languages or minority languages in general to fend for themselves. Presenting Hispanic speakers as an example, the numbers in the left bar chart represent the amount of parents who speak their mother tongues with their children at the slight decrease of passing the language along as generations advance. Starting from 85% of parents speaking Spanish with their kids to 49% by the third generation. As well as the simple influence or encouragement of the use of Spanish also declines according to the right bar chart from 70% of parents encouraging Spanish to 41% after simply three generations. So we analyzed the problem. So now, what's our solutions? Well, first, we proposed an international agreement. With this, in this international agreement, we could take from the successes of the Paris Climate Agreement, by which they first allowed countries to first bear the responsibility of protecting the environment, holding institution, institutions accountable for their actions, and encouraging others around the world to, around the world to do the same and protect their environment. By taking the same framework, we can apply this to indigenous languages by first ensuring that most, if not all, UN member, member states join together as well, and then in institutions, in, me, and then allow institutions to put in um, revitalization initiatives to preserve these in indigenous languages, as well as allow people around the world to help indigenous people and their struggles in a more globalized world, making this solution the more reasonable one. Between the two solutions, digitizing language is the better solution, because it's the process of preserving language by converting all information into a digital format, making it easier and more accessible for anyone in any part of the world to access a language, a language that has been digitalized. It also makes it, it's also way faster to learn a language via the internet than, learning a, uh, than taking a course and learning it via a teacher and going every class. Mind you, it also is less expensive learning a language online than going and taking courses to learn the same language you could possibly learn online. However, there are limitations. As you can see here, for an international agreement to work to its full potential, each country must take part in that agreement and the policies that are written in that agreement. This may be difficult because each country has their own beliefs making the agreement inconsistent and very challenging to achieve the goal of preserving these languages properly. Also, even if all of the governments come together and collectively decide on one agreement, there is no guarantee that all indigenous languages will be, will be protected. It is most likely that the more prominent indigenous languages will be protected, while the rural ones with very few speakers will not be. Now, when it comes to digitizing languages, there's an uncertainty on whether the languages inputted are fully accurate. Um, when inputting languages, people will learn and see an incorrect translation of the language. And this will cause very much, uh, will cause a lot of confusion for the learners and will make it very difficult to learn the language. And it'll be very more challenging for these speakers to understand an incorrect translation. However, this option has a greater outreach than an international agreement. With this option, even the more rural languages will be protected, unlike the international agreement in which the more prominent indigenous languages will be protected. With this option, we can provide a safe haven for all indigenous languages. Thank you. Thank you. Just scoot together. All right, we'll start on this side and work our way across with questions. Here we go. What is a way in which your team's solution makes you think differently about the work you did? Okay, so our, for example, our team solution, we had to 
solutions. One of our solutions was um, like an, an international agreement and our second solution was, was the tech, digitizing language. The second solution was actually incorporated with my IRR that I had written on technology and the effects of technology of globalization. So we did, the work that I put in for my perspective was actually the, the effects of globalization and pop culture in technology and how it affected in like education world. Okay, next up. What's an example of a compelling argument from one of your peers' individual reports that you decided to exclude from the presentation and why? Well, a compelling argument we found was in Meta's individual research report, which where she explained about um, the, struggle, the struggles of indigenous people in the, in the areas of employment. But the reality was it became very difficult to find that in an area in our line of reasoning. Therefore, we decided to exclude it and try to introduce it in a different way. All right. Uh, Meta, give me one specific way that your thinking changed, your thinking changed as a result of uh, Kate's findings. Um, with Kate's findings, I actually, when it comes to indigenous languages, it is assumed that parents will teach their children about their language, and that's how you can keep it and preserve the languages. However, with Kate's research, I realized that parents don't pass down their languages as often as they should be, and that causes the loss of indigenous languages. All right. And last up, if you had another team member, what perspective or limitation could they have reached that would have made a useful contribution to the project? If we had another team member, we believe that they could have reached the perspective of the workplace environment, since workplace also tends to do more with Native people leaving behind their Native tongues to fit into a corporate job. However, this we couldn't find much research on this, so we decided to stick to our own perspectives instead of the workplace environment. All right, you guys are done.